three, two, one, we're live. Good evening or welcome. Good day. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I have been asked to talk about my arrest by the police and brought before the grand jury in New York, end up in the Supreme Court of New York. It was all all right. But my arrest didn't begin in 1987. It, the stage was set long before the 10th of February of 1987. You see, before I got to New York, many, many, many years before, there were many healers then, like they are now, making claims, but never have, you know, delivered. There were 2,781 cases that went before the Supreme Court for practicing medicine without a license and making fraudulent claims. I'm the 2,782nd. When the police came, I said to them, I asked them, why do you have your gun drawn? You are in a health place, the Usha Research Institute. Why do you have your gun drawn? They said the element of surprise. I said, but my mother told me that when I put the ad in the papers, that we cure AIDS and other diseases, that you would be coming. My mother told me that. Been two years now, we've been waiting for you. You said, element of surprise? You're kind of two years late. About the arrest, It was the most beautiful thing that I ever experienced in my life unfolding in front of me. If I were aware of what was happening to me, I think I would have backed out. I would have got scared. Okay. So they put the cuffs on me and said, you have, you have advertised that you cure AIDS and other diseases, which is practicing medicine without a license, and you're also selling product not approved by the FDA. Oh boy, I got all these charges against me. When they put the cuffs on me and they take me down the steps, guess what is about to happen? A dialogue between me and the herbs. And the herbs, I have to go down 19 steps. The herbs are saying, yeah, Dr. Savy, for two years, they've been, for five years then, they've been saying, Dr. Savy, Dr. Savy, Dr. Savy, giving you all kind of praise, standing ovation. But I hope that you know it. We, the herb, were the one that was giving you that privilege. Now, when he gave you the standing ovations, oh, you were happy. Everybody just, Dr. Sebi. Now we, we, the herb, got cuffs on your arms. Handcuffs. Are you going to feel the same way? And I start to laugh. I said, oh, my God. I'm a victim because 
The standing ovations was because of the herbs. Now the handcuffs is because of the herbs. So I know that when the herbs came into my brain and we had this dialogue, that the herb wasn't going to betray me because I know they represent truth. When they opened the door to let me in front in the street, Channel 7 said, Dr. Sebi, do you really cure AIDS? I said, I cure AIDS then, I cure AIDS now. And for as long as I live, I cure AIDS. Well, how do you feel to be arrested? I say, I feel good. The police have to do things the police way. So I wasn't angry at the Attorney General, Mr. Robert Abrams, for arresting me because my brothers and sisters were in New York occupying a position that was unfounded and they thought that I was part of that. No. I'm a different kind of animal. Not better, not worse. A different animal. Don't even try to calibrate me because you do not have a barometer that could measure what I am and who I am. That also would be a mechanical measurement. So don't even go there. I too cannot calibrate you. So when I gave that response to Channel 7, the police then said, why do you have to tell them that? I said, but you guys are acting crazy with me. You know, gun drawn cops on me. And I, or because I said that I cure AIDS. If I said that I cure AIDS and sickle cell and lupus and herpes, then A, you should welcome this. No, put it right there. See, you should work on this. I am your brother. I am a citizen of the United States. I live in the United States. Do you believe that I would leave Honduras to go to America to deploy a bunch of things that were less than the truth? Come on now. No. That was never part of my DNA. That was never part of my giving. That was never anything that I deploy. I don't do that. I never have done that. So they put me in the car and took me to the precinct. When I got to the precinct, the officer that is going to fingerprint me and put the number on my chest said to the officers, you guys messed up. So why you say that? Because this man really healed. They said, I asked him, how do you know? He said, because you healed me. I had gout. I said, but I've never seen you. He said, no, I sent a black policeman to tell you that he had gout and he brought me the medicine or the compounds. I said, why didn't you come? He said, because, you know, I don't know if you love white people, the way you talk, that's me, you know. I'm so certain that everybody thinks that I'm angry. <laughs> I said, you don't know if I love white people. I said, uh, I don't know of any black person that hate white people nowhere in the world. It is impossible for a black person to hate a white person. That is impossible. 
Why? Because our DNA does not represent that. We die for you. We fight wars for you. I was in the merchant marine for 10 years for you. What? That was the dictate. He said, thank you, man. Thank you. I said, thank you. You see, the perception or the myth is that to be black, you got to hate white. You got to hate Chinese. You got to hate Arabs. You got to hate Eskimos. Not to mention Indians or natives. No. To be black is to be sweet. To be black is to be a servant. To be black is to serve. And there's no better position. So, I'm thrown in jail, and here come the day of the trial. The first one was the civil case. Judge Shorter, William Shorter, from Washington, D.C., but he was in the Sixth Appellate Court in New York. He was the judge that let me out on my own recognizance. I arrived in his chambers. He said, why did you advertise that you curate? I said, well, you see, Your Honor, I have a mother that's alive, and there is a continent, a continent by the name of Africa, to which I am a son of. I am an African, and I am not going to make a statement that would undermine my mama, Africa, and my face. And the judge looked at me, and he looked at the woman at the table. He realized that the answer I gave him was one that said, if I didn't cure AIDS, that statement wouldn't be made. He looked at the lady at the table and said, did you guys investigate this man before you arrest him? She said, no. You know, a savior, you know, arrest the nigger. Oh. So the judge said, you didn't investigate the man before you arrested him? She said, no. The judge said, well, the answer he just gave me, he courage. You guys are going to be in trouble. And yes, indeed, the case began now in the civil court. Down below is the Dr. Victor Herbert, an assistant uh, uh, prosecuting attorney or assistant district attorney, Philip Spade, is asking the physician in favor of the state, have you heard of any individual that cured AIDS, Dr. Victor Herbert? He said, no. Have you heard of any therapy that cured AIDS? He said, no. Have you heard of any compounds that cure AIDS? He said, no. The judge is cleaning his nails with his eyes closed. And the judge opened his eyes and said, have you ever used Exhibit A? The doctor said, no. The judge said, thank you. I went back to cleaning his nails. When the doctor saw that the judge just destroyed his line of defense, the doctor said, 
Your Honor, I know all about herbs. Like take, for instance, the foxglove. And the judge responded by saying, the white or the pink? I said, now how in the devil does this judge know about herbs? Well, the case went on and finally, I won in the, in the civil case. But the judge, Judge Shorter said to me, Dr. Sebi, when you walk in my courthouse, the state wanted me in my chambers. The state wanted me to see you as a villain. But I saw an honorable man. When I was 18, he said, I want to do something in America that made the difference. I didn't get to do that. I just became a judge. But today, you gave me the privilege to judge that which makes the difference. Bam, bam, bam. You won your case. That's the civil case. But I want you to know that I was not in any way angry at the Attorney General. I'm not angry at anyone. I'm never angry. I don't need to be angry. I got a job to do. I got a whole race that I have to be addressing. Because in the past 500 years, we haven't had anyone to come to us with a method that really complements our genetical predisposition. And why? Because we never had to do that in Africa. Then they put us through this thing we call slavery, disconnecting us from home. I'm not blaming black America for not knowing certain things. I'm saying though, this I am saying, that since the standards, the bar has been raised and standards have been set, why do you continue to offer substandard treatment? Dr. Sebi proved that yes, he cured AIDS. Yes, he cured sickle cell and lupus and herpes and blindness and others. Now, the judge said, you have to go to the Supreme Court now on the criminal side. I went to the criminal side. That's the side that is really, really, really the beautiful side of this program. I sat there and the judge said, will you please begin? I said, I don't know where to begin. Begin any way you want to begin. I said, well, I would begin with three questions. Your Honor, is it a fact that our Holy Bible and the Quran, the Hadith, the Talmud, and the Torah, they all teach us that the herbs are for the healing of the nations? She said, yeah. Is it a fact that the father of medicine, Mr. Hippocrates, addressing the diseases of mankind then, he was able to reverse all of them, establishing the principle of medical science. When I take the Hippocratic oath, am I not supposed to follow the precepts of Hippocrates? Well, Your Honor, that is what I'm doing. I'm not violating any American law. I did not come from Honduras to America to violate any of your laws. I respect the law then, now, and forever. Did he use herbs and chemicals? She said, herbs. Last question, Your Honor. Is it a fact that nature, that science teaches that the human body is carbon-based and that the substance that complements, the only substance that complements the human body is a carbon-based substance. That is where you find this arrangement they call 
chemical affinity. Chemical affinity come before assimilation. There has to be an affinity for the stuff, for it to assimilate. Assimilations means digestion. Electric body, electric food. Carbon-based body, carbon-based food. She said, yes. I said, thank you. I rest my case. Are we going to get a response from what this man just said? And who is she asking that to? The team of doctors that were there representing the state and Dr. Victor Herbert was at the head. What kind of response are they going to give? You see, we black people, we live in a world of fear and a world that is so far from reality. It begins with Kandumble, Obatula. We talk about the Orishas. We talk about Obia. But nowhere in this arrangement of spirituality could we extrapolate a component that we could use to address the state of the race of today. Nowhere, and not one ingredient, but I believe in it. I believe in spirituality when I believe in nothing. I don't even believe in me. I don't have to believe in me. I live me. This stuff about belief, this is why the Attorney General got in the predicament with me that he got into. He should have never arrested me. But then again, I can't talk like that. That's hindsight. That's after the fact. I was supposed to be arrested. Because my mother had told me that in placing the ad in the papers that I would be arrested. She knew it. You see, my mama was tired of hearing people tell her that I was lying. And she said, well, I'm going to fix them. She called me. I was in D.C. She said, son, do yourself a favor. Nobody, nobody believe what you're saying is true. Put the ad in the papers and go to jail. And I know you could get out. And that is exactly what I did with the recommendation of mama. But there again. Our compounds are based on mama. Honor thy mother and thy father, that thy days may be long upon the land. Again, mama came from an organic, from an organic environment. And all of the compounds that could properly address the human body would have to be from that same structure that supports all life. It's not a philosophy. So Dr. Victor Herbert and the prosecuting attorney, Mr. Bartley, oh, he was trying to show the court that I said that I cure AIDS. I never make that statement. The ad read, AIDS has been cured by the OSHA Research Institute. I don't like to take claim of anything. I don't need that. Why do I need it for? Am I going to win something because I make a claim? I better make a claim and live up to it because that burden would be on me. Your Honor, I have never said that I cure AIDS. I said that the paper read AIDS has been cured by the OSHA Research Institute. And we specialize in cures for sickle cell, lupus, herpes, cancer, bladder, paralysis, and others. The judge said, 
may I see the ad, the papers? And when she looked at the paper, and this you could find in the Amsterdam News, November the 2nd, 1985, page 9. You would also find Miss Emma Wright, a sickle cell patient that was killed. The judge said, oh my God, she's right again. His name doesn't appear here. So I said to the jurors, to the judge, to the press, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the jury, my most humble and distinguished positions, and last but not least, my prosecuting attorney, Mr. Bartley, you have been trying for one hour trying to convince the judge that I said that I create. I never make that statement because I like to share. I've always been like that. That's my life. It's things I do. But you've been fighting to attach that to me. But I'm going to give it to you for free. Yes, I curate. No big thing. It only makes me responsible. And I am responsible. And in my position of responsibility, I don't want you to believe that I'm going to impose myself on you. I need you. And if I, at some point, is not quite in balance or in symmetry, you, the listener, you have the right to correct Dr. Sebi. You have that right. I'm not above anyone. I'm your brother. I'm your friend. I am your servant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me the privilege to share with you how we were able to win the case. The witnesses came, 77 of them instead of nine, and all of the evidence was shown, AIDS before and AIDS after, lupus and herpes and blindness and everything else. Hey, brothers and sisters, shouldn't you be happy with your brother? And you, the white race and every other race, you should be happy with me too. Why should you be angry at me? I'm here to heal you too. We all need healing. And you should be happy to know that out of that black experience with you in America, that we, the black race, have in our DNA the capacity to embrace you, the world, and offer you the healing that you need. 